Electron is pretty bad, right? Well, depends on who you ask. If you ask a lot of people in the Linux space, you'll certainly hear a lot of complaints about it, how much they hate it, and how terrible it really is. So let's talk about why Electron is disliked so much, and then towards the end, we'll talk about why it's so popular with developers. Now this is becoming less and less of an issue as PCs are getting faster and faster and faster, but Electron is going to be inherently heavy. Whether that's on RAM, storage, performance, or any other metric you want to be using. Now that doesn't mean that some developers don't also make that worse by writing poorly optimized applications, but at its core, Electron is going to be heavier than things like a GTK application, a QT application, which are actually going to be cross-platform libraries as well, because the way that Electron does its cross-platform support is it is running a stripped down version of Chromium, the engine that powers things like Google Chrome, Brave, Opera, Opera GX, Edge, Chromium. Basically all of the web browsers that people care about with the exception of Firefox and I guess Safari if anyone still uses that. And I'm sure we all have great experience with how lightweight modern web browsers are. Obviously that's a lie, we all know it's a mess. And this problem is a lot worse for mobile users where battery matters. If you're on a laptop, tablet or phone, having something eating up your performance is going to affect that life. But unlike a web browser, where if you wanna have a bunch of separate things open, you can go and open up a bunch of separate tabs. And because all of these tabs are running in the same browser, they can share a lot of those same resources. They're not opening up a whole new Chromium instance, as opposed to having, say, a bunch of new browsers open. In Electron, a bunch of new browsers open is basically all you can do. Every time you open up a new Electron application, this is treated as its own separate thing. Taking the heaviness of the modern web browser, chucking out those nice little optimizations, and giving you the worst of the experience. And not just the worst of that experience. Let's say you wanna have multiple Electron applications installed. Now, one of the great things about Linux is the way that dependencies are shared. You can have these two completely different applications using the same libraries, and rather than going and reinstalling that library twice, it's going to use the same library. In Electron, a lot of the time that can't be done because Electron applications are very sensitive to the version they are running on. So say you have something like um, Discord and Spotify. These have a very set version that they are running with and they might not run with any different version until the developers go and update things. This is a problem because you can't share those dependencies. So every time you install a new Electron application, it is very likely it has a bundled version of Electron taking up way more storage space. Now for the open source applications, this can typically be addressed. A lot of the time the developers will accept patches and bring the Electron version up to the more modern versions like Element, for example. Element is a matrix client and is pretty good at keeping up to date with Electron. Discord, on the other hand, being proprietary, the devs update it when the devs feel like updating it, which also means that if there are, say, security vulnerabilities in that version, they might exist there for five, six years. Maybe Discord decided to patch them. Maybe they didn't. No one really knows. It's just sitting there waiting for someone to find out. Many people also have a general dislike of JavaScript as a language. Now, being an interpreted language, that is inherently going to come with some level of performance issues. And many people also have a problem with JavaScript as a language and don't think it belongs on the desktop. Now, being an interpreted language, that is inherently going to have some level of performance issues. And many people also have a problem with JavaScript as a language and don't think it should be used on the desktop. Now, being an interpreted language, that is inherently going to come with some level of performance issues. Now, I know the Python guys are going to say, but modern Python is really fast. And yes, modern Python Python is great and modern JavaScript is a lot faster than it used to be. But if you have a good interpreter and a good compiler, the compiled code is always going to be faster and that is true for Python and that is true for everything else. 
I think the dislike of JavaScript on the desktop should be shifted to a dislike of these web-based JavaScript frameworks. Many of these frameworks are designed with the web in mind. And when you're designing like that, you're designing for a TV. You're designing for a computer monitor. You're designing for a laptop screen. You're designing for a phone. And you need this framework to be able to easily work on all of these different form factors, on all of these different web engines, and work consistently. And when you have that much code dealing with all of these different scenarios, that's just going to be slower than just dealing with the computer class devices. That's not a problem with the frameworks, that's just what they are made for. They are not made for use just on the desktop. Now, one of the good things about Electron is we get a lot of Linux applications we would otherwise never see, like Discord, like Spotify, because all these are is the web application bundled for the desktop. But many of these applications are released without much thought being put into Linux. For example, on Discord, there is a bunch of buttons that just don't do anything, let alone over on the Wayland side, where it's even worse. Who likes Discord screen sharing? It's great. In many ways, Electron can be likened to Java of the past. You get these applications on every single platform, but they just don't care about supporting them. It's here, it's not optimal, but it's better than nothing. And like those Java applications of the past, if you care about desktop consistency, you're using GNOME, KDE, and you got this theme that, you know, looks nice. The Electron application isn't going to look like that. Now, you can go and, you know, modify the CSS to make it in line with the style. But that involves writing a whole new theme, a whole new theme for every application because different applications are going to be using the HTML in different ways and you can't just have one consistent theme for everything. But developers don't just hate their users. They're not using Electron out of spite. There is a very good set of reasons. As a development environment, a development platform, it makes it incredibly easy to build something cross-platform. Because you're not really building something cross-platform, you're targeting Electron, you're targeting Chromium. Now, a good developer is going to do those OS-specific changes, those OS-specific optimizations, and you'll see this in applications that do run well under Linux, under Windows, under macOS, as opposed to things where there's just buttons all over the place that don't do anything. Any issue on this front isn't a problem with Electron, it is a problem with the developer themselves. Also, not every developer out there is a desktop developer. A lot of projects out there are developed web first, especially when we're looking at a lot of the corporate projects, and they want to have this desktop support as well. Now, you might say, oh, they should just have desktop developers and build it in a proper toolkit. And Yes, they should. That is going to give you a much better application. But a lot of the time, they don't want to do that, and it makes it a much more productive use of your time to target the web, and target Chromium, and target Electron. It's not like you just drop in your web code and then you're done, but it is a lot easier to learn how to do than learning like the QT library or learning GTK or any of the other libraries out there. And in the same vein, it hides many of the complexities of desktop development. Now we can call these people soy devs or whatever you want to call them, but soy devs are the ones getting paid. Now in a perfect world, I would like everything to be a native desktop application. It runs nice, it's nice and light, doesn't waste a bunch of CPU resources to do basically nothing. But Electron is the direction that things are going, so pretty much we're gonna have to learn to deal with it or write your applications and deal with the problem. I'll certainly use an Electron application, but it's certainly not a selling point. But let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Do you have any Electron applications installed? Do you avoid them as much as you possibly can? I would love to know. So if you like this video, remember to go and like the video. And if you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon, subscribe, silly bearer pay link in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over T. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Obton Plays. That's going to be it for me. And I'm out.